point is that all parts are for the municipal and the, the officer base for the new law comes from the village. So in essence, all the contributions are contributed to the new officers that you run this, as well as the fees of the new town and chair. So uh, clearly we'd be quite keen to have more parties on the book, because that would actually be <coughs>
shared with the agenda today, and thank you for the opportunity to come and share with you the, the outcome of, of the review that we had on consultation. So, just to, to the, uh, give everybody the background, really, the CCG has had a um, has been part of a, a, a policy for procedures of no clinical priority for quite some time, and the policy was due for review. So, we reviewed the policy in uh, conjunction with the other Cheshire. CCGs um, and work with NHS England to come up with a list of procedures and services that we wanted to ask uh, for consultation <coughs> to get more evidence really as to whether we should look at changing the criteria for those particular procedures and services. So the, the service um, that we went through, we looked at the, the current policy, we looked at all of the, the best practice, there's, there's loads of new evidence coming out clinical effectiveness and also cost effectiveness. Um, we did the quality impact assessments and quality impact assessments and we, we used the pre-engagement work that we did with that and discussions with various clinicians um, and a review <coughs> of the evidence of the clinical effectiveness and also best practice so we were trying to get a holistic view on them. We produced some consultation packs as part of the consultation which gave as much detail as we could, knowing that some people wanted a lot of detail and others didn't, so that it was all accessible for people and, and on, the, um, on our website. We made uh, documents available in different languages as well. We also got in touch with some key stakeholders uh, during the pre-engagement and then uh, writing to advise them again of the consultation and inviting for input as well. So we advertised the consultation and, and uh, we believe that you know, we were, did an extensive 90 day consultation. We, it went on our website, GP practice screens that you'll see in the waiting room, Twitter, Facebook, we did uh, sponsored adverts, leaflets, advert in the uh, we're, we're, we're view, and it also featured on BBC Northwest tonight and Radio Amazing as well. So, in terms of communication, we went as far and wide as we possibly could. We also had engagement strategies where we uh, undertook some public meetings and some specific meetings with various groups as well to try and gain as much feedback as possible from, from the public. So these were all summarised and taken to our governing body where the decision uh, was made and as, as a result. The public feedback, you'll see we had 724 responses. Um, so obviously it doesn't represent the whole lot of the world, but we did listen to the views of people and in some instances decisions were taken into account, particularly as well if we had additional clinical evidence, evidence that was given to us as well. So in governing body we went through each of these, and I'm, I'm not proposing to go through each of the procedures here. Uh, Sue Wells is here as our chair if you want clinical in-depth information on any of them, but we went through each of them in, in detail, uh, looking at the clinical evidence, looking at uh, you know, what did the public say, what, what did other societies say, and that's what we with, with our decision <coughs> in body. So in terms of next steps, um, the policy's now been amended, it's gone through another uh, 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 committee within the CCG, it's been agreed there, and it'll be implemented now from the 1st of April. So we've, we've um, been in touch with all of the providers that are impacted by that, we've, we've put uh, work with primary care to make sure that they're the way as well. We, we've got a piece, uh, PLC, PLCP is the uh, policy of uh, procedures of local <coughs> um, we, We've got a web based validation tool that, that we've um, developed for primary care and, and uh, secondary care clinicians <coughs> to use so that it just helps to make it much easier for them to, to use it. So we've updated that as well. And it's gone on our website as well. So um, I suppose that's just what I wanted to share today, really, is that it's the process, the decisions are there, and, and that um, it's, it's going to be implemented from the 1st of April. Thank you very much. Do you have any time for questions? As, as much as I can. I can't say some of the terms are still as much as I've tried. So, in terms of the, the decisions to no, 
not, not make any of the changes. Some, some of that was taking into account the views of the public. Also being mindful that it, it, even though it was a small number, we did say we did feel it was a snapshot of people. <coughs> but it was also very much the clinical decision as well about what was you know, correct. In terms of other CCGs, we did look very much as to what other CCGs had also made a decision, and, and our, our IVF is one in particular. But as a CCG, we did not feel that we wanted to go any further than two. And we felt that we had evidence to help support us in, in that we would only reduce by one cycle, not go down to the leave it at two cycles and not go down to the one cycle, which I know a lot of other CCGs have. Uh, it's, it's personal to, to the person, isn't it? If, 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 if you've got that condition, if you're going to stop funding them, what do they do? A lot of this is on the clinical evidence. So, what, what we found is that because of new evidence that's come out, that actually they weren't doing anything for the patients, so actually it wasn't helping those patients at all. So, in some of the instances, what we've said is that they shouldn't have. Conservative management, they should go straight to have something else because the outcomes are better. <coughs> just if I could add to that, um, which is absolutely correct, that, that there will be potentially some individual cases where it, for that particular patient there may be more chance of that procedure for clinical reasons having benefit for them. So, uh, as advice to all of our procedures low clinical priority, if a particular um, clinician feels that for that patient in front of them there are better clinical reasons that that, that, that procedure should occur, there is um, an individual funding request system. So, so it can be individualised if clinically appropriate. Just, just have a follow-up. Um, you, you were talking about the, some of the interventions. Thank you. 
decision to move from three or six two cycles is necessary, some other uh, areas have gone further, there's actually not much increase in, in, in benefit between two cycles and three cycles. There is significant more benefit for having two cycles than as in rates of success is obviously something we're looking for there. Um, so, so the extra third cycle didn't seem to add a significant um, increased rate of births. Yeah. No, so so there is a, it, above 36 that we shorten 